look too awkward. <laughs> Welcome, what's up? Welcome to Mic Check. I am giggling at our guest, Aaron, because you just look not comfortable in the chair. What you doing? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> well, thank y'all so much for tuning in to our episode today. We appreciate it. Like I said, I have my guest, Aaron Moran, here. You want to introduce yourself to the people before I get into some announcements? Mm. Mm. Your name is? My name is Erin Moran, and I go to JCTMS. Mm -hmm. What else do you do? Um, I like to swim a lot. Okay. And play football. Okay. And just play around with my friends. Are you playing football next year? Yes. How about swimming? You gonna swim? Yep. Okay, okay. And aren't you a beloved member of Breeway? Yes, I very much am. Yes, you very much are. We love us some Aaron, okay? And I think he knows that on top of that. <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> so we're going to get into some announcements really quick, which really I have one. So I have been volunteering or started volunteering at the Newburgh Community Center, and they have a new program there for kids. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share some information. That's right. They're right down the street from you, huh? Well, listen up, Aaron. Shirts with a purpose, okay? There's a member there, or um, also another volunteer there, her name is Jessica, and this is her program that she put on, so it's called Shirts with a Purpose. Uh, kids can learn to design, create, and press their own shirts. Uh, this program is for kids in the ages of 14 to 18, and will take place from April 11th all the way throughout May, ending May 30th. And they can go in and get these skill sets and get a shirt made, from 2.30 p.m. to 4 uh, o'clock p.m. For those who don't know the address or where Newburgh Community Center is, it's at 4810 Exeter, I can't say, E-X-E-T-E-R <laughs> e -E Avenue. Um, I'm pretty sure you can Google that. Um, so that is where the uh, community center is. The program is gonna run for four weeks, focusing on uh, girls and women, and then the last four weeks focusing on uh, boys and men. And then the program ends with a group trip to the Roots Museum. So it's gonna be a great time, I'm sure. Erin, make sure you go get a shirt made, okay? I'm Whenever the last 15. four weeks are. Oh, how old are you? Tell the people how old you are. 12. 12, um, missed it by two years. Maybe we can meet someone and send them in and they can make a shirt for you. They'll do it on your behalf. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get that set up. I'll get it set up. No worries on that. I'm going to just drop my piece of paper right there. Um, those was all the announcements I had today. <laughs> uh, please follow Dove Delegates on all social platforms. It's just Dove Delegates on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, so let's do a check-in. How are you feeling today, Erin? How was your day today? It was amazing. Amazing? Tell me more. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were um, in one of my special areas today. I okay. Was, I was um, building a mini golf out of cardboard. Mmm. And that was really fun. Okay. And Did it just, work? Did you try to play golf on it? We can't test it until tomorrow. Oh. Because I'm not finished with it. Oh, you're not done. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else do you have to do with it? Um, really just add the hole and make the um, driver, like the putter, mm -hmm. and really that's it. That's it? Is yeah. this for like a project or something? Or just something y'all doing for fun? It's, um, cause the class that we're doing it for is um, STEM, so Oh, yeah. okay, look at you, science and building stuff. <laughs> okay, they got plenty of scholarships there. Uh, around STEM programs if you go to college. Are you gonna go to college? Yep. You are? That's dope. What are you gonna go to college for? It's okay if you don't know. Pilot. You wanna be a pilot? Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be fun. What made you wanna be a pilot? I'm oh. digging all into your life right now. I don't know, planes are like really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are pretty cool. How many planes have you ridden? I've actually flown a plane before. What? 
tell me, did you really fly a plane? When yeah. did you fly a plane? Um, it was like this program thing mm -hmm. that um, and I went to. Me and Brady did. Okay. And we were basically like co-pilots. Mm -hmm. But the actual pilot of the plane just took off of the wheel, so we were basically flying the plane the oh, whole time. That is so cool. I bet your adrenaline was pumping. If I was gonna do it, I was gonna be like, you know what? Someone gotta take over, cause we go down. <laughs> well, the only good. thing that really made me nervous was something that he was something that the guy calls is either a bird or a roller coaster. The bird is like you act like there's a bird in front of you and you go up and then down, and it's like you it fly just, over the bird. There's not really a bird there. So oh, okay. And then the roller coaster, you, it's like an actual roller coaster, but like way up in the sky, and you go up. Uh huh. Or you just go down. And you just down. drop. Did you do both of those? Yes. Ooh. It's scary. The roller coaster sounds fun, but the bird, uh -huh. like avoiding the bird. The roller coaster is not fun. It's not fun? No. Does your stomach hurt? Yes. Oh, okay. And you were literally just going straight down. Oh, but you knew when to pull up, right? The plane was turned off. Like, he had to turn off the plane <laughs> for the plane to go down. And then you had to turn it back on and pull it up before it hits the ground. And you just go off. Well, Aaron, my nerves would have been right there with you, shivering. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad y'all made it. <laughs> and I'm glad y'all were able to fly a plane. That's pretty fun. Yep. Keep me posted on that, because I just want to know more. How else was your day amazing? Mm. I don't really know. You don't really know? Nope. Got you. It was putt-putt creations, and that was pretty much it, huh? Yep. Awesome. How was your spring break? What would you do on spring break? Chill. Chill? <laughs> That's a good little feeling there. Yep. Chill How many games did you play? Oculus. Oh, thousands. Thousands? You have thousands of games? <laughs> Probably. Probably. Are they like on your phone or something? Mm -mm. No. Mostly on my Xbox and my um, Oculus. Oh, okay. Aaron was just telling us about his Oculus today, and he put it on his mom and tried to push her off a cliff. So, <laughs> so she's not messing with those anymore, and I'm not messing with those since like 2000. 14 maybe so i'm pretty sure oh, the they're Oculus worse Quest now. 2 is amazing is it amazing see i just feel like that's a lot like like i'm in the game now which i guess that's the point yeah. but i'm gonna feel like how you felt there's doing the roller coaster basketball. on the airplane there's a basketball game that i like to play a lot it's called gym class it's gym really class fun. okay that's fun. okay and maybe i could do stuff like that like the we yeah. like the, how they had bowling i can maybe do stuff like that but anything where it's like a first-person shooter? Well, you do not want to play Resident Evil 4. Absolutely not. And, okay, this one, our geek is coming out. I actually watched the playthrough because I don't have time to play the game. But I watched the entire playthrough on YouTube, and it looks amazing. Have you seen the first Resident Evil 4? The first make? On what? Like, on what? Um, I think it would be on PlayStation. Yes, I have. You have? Okay, mm -hmm. so major improvement. It looks really good. Yeah. No, I would never play. Especially I would never do VR with Resident Evil. <laughs> Who's crazy? It's actually really fun. Really fun? <laughs> and zombies don't look that realistic. They're just oh, they like... they don't? Well, really, they're, you're in a town full of cannibals. Right, that exactly. That try to eat you, so. Yeah, and trying to take the president's daughter the one somewhere. scariest moment that i'm not playing resident evil anymore for is you're on this boat right and you're like sailing away from the like town is where that the, the cannibals... thing in the water tries to attack you yes where the cannibals are and i i didn't like i wasn't expecting it so i was just rolling yeah i think it was a little new oh then it like popped out at me and i went <laughs> just like that he was about to wipe out huh <laughs> Careful now. That's probably how you went. You just threw it off you, huh? I flicked the off. I flicked the Oculus off of my head, and I just got off of it. Just got off. So wait, you never went to go finish the game? Nope. No. Well, it'll be there whenever you're ready. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. We are just chatting it up, Aaron. I'm glad that you had an amazing day today, and I'm happy that we got to geek out over some video games. Um, so I mentioned today earlier 
that our topic is on imagination and that whole concept today, right? I want to give a shout out to Kalila Collins um, over the Dove program as she introduced imagination to me in a whole new way in turn, like not new, but like reminding you of, again, the concept of imagination and that it could be applied at any time of your life anywhere to include reimagining community, reimagining uh, policing efforts, reimagining rent, uh, mental health resources. You can just imagine the world and the support that you want in this world. So shout out to Kalila for that nice gem and reminder. I've been obsessed with it ever since. Uh, today, we're going to chat. Nigel's going to be here soon, but we're going to chat a little bit about imagination, when and where it's usually used, and then go over um, a couple of questions from this book that I have called Imaginable. It's right here. Y'all probably was like, why she got this book right there? Imaginable by Jane McGonagall. And for all my Harry Potter fans, yes, there is an actual McGonagall in our world. I don't know if it's spelled like this. I don't think it's spelled like this. <laughs> but Jane wrote this book, Imaginable, and that is where we're going to be pulling um, our questions or our activity from uh, when we come back after our news break. So don't go anywhere. When we come back, Nigel is going to appear in that chair, and then we all are going to discuss some stuff about imagination. You already on it today because you're building a whole golf course from scratch. <laughs> so, I mean... We already on a good track today. You must have already known. So don't go anywhere. We're going to take this quick commercial break, and we will be right back to continue this awesome conversation on the concept of imagination. Thank you. The Plug Network is ever expanding. Subscribe to our YouTube page and hit the notification bell for all updates. Thank you, and stay plugged in. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. You good? Yeah. Okay. You know you got to check every minute. Like, you good? Yeah. Okay. We just need to make sure. Are you still good? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I think we got the update. I think Aaron's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're talking about imagination. You watched SpongeBob, right? Yeah. You seen that episode when he's like, imagination. imagination. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> I love SpongeBob. I think SpongeBob is great for... I don't know, triggering the imagination, I guess. So, Aaron, yeah, I saw. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was like, okay, you must know. You got to be a fan. Um, so in your own words or your understanding, tell me what imagination is. I really think imagination is like a way to like express how you want like your world to be. Mm hmm Yeah. And like, I think like, imagination is like every kid's like dream on like what they want to happen in mm -hmm. life and oh really in my opinion imagination is like how should I put this it's like take your time Is it like a, it really just like helps kids like picture like mm -hmm. what they want to do and like how they want their world to be? Yeah, I agree with you. I feel the same way. Um, when it comes to imagination, do you think only kids use imagination? No, no, 
Tell me about some adults that you know that use imagination. Most definitely a lot of YouTubers I watch mm -hmm. use a lot of imagination on like making things and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You used your imagination today with the start of a golf course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm expecting a golf course, okay, by the end of the summer, all by cardboard. Can you do it? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no worries here. Awesome. So I definitely feel that imagination, I agree with you, that imagination is a great way to express the world that you want to live in. Um, tell me some other ways uh, or areas in which you can use imagination. How have you used imagination outside of your project today? Oh, I hit you with two I... questions there. <laughs> to like try to do something I've like never done before. It could be that or perfecting something you always do or just wanting to do something you always do differently. Yeah. So whenever you use the Oculus. Ooh. Ooh. Most definitely that because whenever I be playing, um, there's this game, like a basketball game, it's called gym class. Mm -hmm. And like you can like dunk in it. And I always use my like imagination to like create new dunks to do. And I keep on trying it over and over again until I perfect it. Right. Okay. Do you pretend that you're like LeBron James or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm baby curry. You're baby curry? <laughs> baby curry, okay. That could make sense because y'all both short. So oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Your mom's short, so I think you're gonna be short. <laughs> but prove me wrong somehow. <laughs> we just gotta let it play out. Okay, cool. Do you think in today's world in society that a lot of people don't expect um, adults to use imagination outside of being creative. Yes, I do. I think that like a lot of people in the world think that imagination is just for like kids to use to like mm -hmm. make up imaginary friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. Good comment and response right there. I definitely, I think I felt the same way when Kalila reminded me that we could imagine better for everyday life um i think the epiphany there was oh that's right like we can't imagination isn't just reserved for kids who are exploring their interests or just being creative or something like that how do you think we could fix that how do you think we could spread the word to a bunch of adults to be more you know use more of their imagination throughout the day and throughout their life I don't know. You don't know? I think you can just get your mega horn <laughs> and just scream imagination over and over again. <laughs> Go to an adult on the street and ask, have you imagined today with your megaphone? Does that sound like a plan? I don't want to break their eardrums. You don't want to break their eardrums? <laughs> I don't want you to break their eardrums either. So we'll think of something better. We'll think of something better. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull out this book that I have introduced and shared imaginable by jane mcgonagall again mcgonagall it's crazy all right so aaron i'm going to ask you a question it's kind of a two-part well i guess just the way they wrote it but i'm going to ask you a question and let you know how to answer it or like whatever scale and then we'll talk about it shortly sound good mm -hmm. all right when you think about the next 10 years do you think things will mostly stay the same and go on as normal? Or do you expect that most of us will dramatically rethink and reinvent how we do things? If you think things will stay the same and go on as normal, that's a one. And then if you think we're gonna rethink and reinvent how we do things, that's a two. So think about it on a scale. Two. So you think it's 100% gonna be this side, nothing in the middle a little bit? Uh -uh. Nope. No five or seven, yeah. just 10 all the way. Yeah. The second one. Okay, that's interesting. I want to answer the question too. Hold on. When you think about the next 10 years, you know what? I'll be the seven for us, okay? I'm going to give us a seven. I think that some things are still going to go on as normal. 
because I feel like that's kind of been the thing until yeah. those fade out. And we're also going to make breakthroughs in other stuff. I think that as well. Okay, so we're like in the same little area, I guess, when it comes to imagining a life out like beyond ours. Do you think about your future often? Mm, yeah. You do? What kind of things do you think about? Oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> like do you think about your business yeah i do I mean, newsflash aaron has a business i was waiting for him to say something in the first segment but he did not so <laughs> you think about your business okay um i think about like what's like going to happen later on in life mm -hmm. do you mean like to you or for you or for like to me mm -hmm. okay and what things like that pop up like college yeah college pops up okay why are you looking at me like that <laughs> <laughs> Because you're like, Amira, that's all I got. <laughs> and I'm cool with that. So as you can see, kids still think about their futures in case anyone thought otherwise or whatever. Uh, before breaking into our next segment, and then we're going to chat about our, our activity a little bit more and the answer you gave, I want you to share with the people your business. Okay, so... Yeah. My business is called AM Kids Bath and Body essentials okay and and basically what we do is like we make like soap and like lip gloss and stuff for like kids and mm -hmm. stuff and yeah cool how long you been in business it's like 2018 i think oh you had this business before i met you Pretty sure, yeah. I did not. So I met Aaron, uh, like I said, Breeway fam. I met Aaron during protesting in 2020, and that was it. I did hear about the business later that year, but I thought you just started it. So that's pretty cool. Is your products sold at any stores, or do you just sell them out of your house? I just sell them, like, at, like, the flea off, like, flea off market and mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, that's good. You be getting some business. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. When's the next time you're going to be at a flea off? Did you say a flea off? Is that like a flea market? Yeah, flea market. Battle? That's what I'm thinking. It's a flea market <laughs> battle. Like, <laughs> no, it's just a flea market? Yeah. Okay. Well, when's the next time you're going to be there? I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure there are going to be some up, like coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as you figure it out, you let me know and we'll. We'll promote. We'll put it out there. Oh. Be here at this time on this date and spend this amount of money. We'll even put a, a requirement of money people have to spend. No, no. Don't do that. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. I'll just try to help you out. You know what I'm saying? No? Okay. <laughs> we'll keep you posted with the details for when Aaron is going to be having his products being sold at a flea market. Uh, we'll let you know which flea market, again, the day and time there. And please spend however much you feel. You like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm just playing, Aaron. Well, we'll go ahead and take a small little break. And we'll be back so we can discuss our activity a little more. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Plug Network is ever-expanding. Subscribe to our YouTube page and hit the notification bell for all updates. Thank you and stay plugged in. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. 
located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. We're back with plus three. Yay! Well, plus one, which equals three. I know my math. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So welcome back, Nigel, our co-producer of Mic Check. Nigel, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the people? Uh, so my name is Nigel Blackburn. Um, I am a Mic Check co-producer. Um, and yeah, I'm here to, you know, witness greatness. Witness Grace, Grace. I can't even say it. Like, <laughs> but he's right. Witness greatness. Starting with Aaron, and his. I just can't get over the uh, golf courses <laughs> built. We should go. Like, we should collab. We should honestly collab. You know what I'm saying? The A and A. You know what I'm saying? A and A situation. I don't know. You also need to correct your name of your business. His mom graciously came and let him know that he got it incorrect. So let's get it correct so the people know what to look for on Facebook. Because there's also a Facebook page. So it's AM Kids Bath Essentials. There you go. No body. Don't look for body. Just Bath Essentials. AM Kids Bath Essentials. Mm -hmm. Boom. I am now a customer. So you too. Find it on Facebook. And I'm pretty sure there they'll also let you know when they're going to be posted up at the next flea market selling their products. Thank you. So I said that we would chat a little bit more about our activity, but we got to loop Nigel in now and ask Nigel the question as well. So Nigel, the way the question is, it's like a scale. So one in is 10 and one in is one. I did that backwards, but. I got you, I got you. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so this first part of the question is around one. The second part of the question is around 10. And you can choose on the scale where you believe your belief with this. Okay. Okay. First part uh, that aligns with the one on the scale. Okay. <laughs> um, when you think about the next 10 years, do you think things will mostly stay the same and go on as normal? Or, this is the part that's on the 10, mm. do you expect that most of us will dramatically rethink and reinvent how we do things. Mm -hmm. Anywhere between one and 10? Yep. Okay. Cool. Rate your outlook. Uh, Aaron said straight up 10. I said okay. seven. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the seven. You're I want to say, I want to say, I want to say eight. Mm -hmm. Um, It just has to be some things done like before <laughs> we get to eight. But I'll say, yeah, I'm hopeful for eight. Hopeful for eight? Yeah. Okay, okay, we're going to start. Let's everyone remember that. Eight, ten, seven. Okay, we all pretty <laughs> we pretty much all in line. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we'll start with Aaron first. Aaron, please explain your ten. Why you think everything is just going to be reinvented and totally different in the next ten years? Um. Well, really, I think everything's like going to change and be reinvented in the next ten years because, like, we're like. Like, we are, like, coming up with more technology mm -hmm. that, like, can reinvent, like, our world and, like, can change our world. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree. I feel like we're making things a mile a minute. So, mm -hmm. in 10 years, I guess, yeah, it should be normal for everyone to have Google Glasses or something like that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's going to have an Oculus. Mm -hmm. We've been talking a lot about video games and Oculuses and stuff. So Oculus is nice. Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> he said it was nice. He played Resident Evil 4 on it, but we don't have to get into that because I just think Aaron <laughs> is <freaking> crazy. <laughs> That's a lot of cannibals in your face. Um, okay. Nigel, please explain your eight. Mm, I feel like my eight stems from like the progress that we're making uh you know with community um you know like with uh, i want to say with policy but i would be lying to myself um i feel like we get there but then we're knocked back yeah almost 50 years yeah 
And then we just have to earn that back first. Mm -hmm. And then it's a and lot. It, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so like, with, but with, you know, community, with people coming together. So like, it's definitely that. And I'm hopeful for that um, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, like that's what's going to create change, like the people. So right. that's my eight. That's my eight. That's your eight? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good answers. Uh, I'll share mine a little bit. I First of all, I have to look at the question again. Hold on. Read that out. And I said, what did I say? I said a seven. Okay. So I mentioned it a little bit to Aaron earlier, but I gave my outlook a rating of seven because I felt that um, as history repeats or moves on, mm -hmm. there's always going to be some kind of traditional things that are still left over. Mm -hmm. And half of me kind of hopes for that or wants that to a degree, like, and definitely in other areas, mm -hmm. like not like, in our government, yeah, <laughs> local or federal, like I don't want that. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> to me, there needs to be a rotate in. Yeah. All right, everyone else, like yeah. every mm -hmm. few years or something, like keep it fresh, keep yeah. it fresh, in keep there. it fresh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but I do feel, me realistically, in the next ten years, there are going to be some stuff that are still going to be done the same. But to what y'all said, there are going to be strides in areas like policy or community. And there's definitely going to be strides in technology. Mm -hmm. Aaron, what are you looking forward to the most being built? <sighs> the most technological advancing thing, like what what could that be for you? You could either make it up or mention something that might already be in progress. That's a loaded question, too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is my second loaded question. <laughs> I've been loading them up. Oh. Hmm. Like a transformer. You want a transformer? Yeah. What you want, Bumblebee? Like a robot you can climb in and control. Mm. Okay. Oh, so you want a robot that can transform into anything? Yeah. Not mm. just a car? Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't have enough, like, intellige intellig you I can't it. Intelligence. I can't see. Let's do it again. Intelligence. Ah. Intelligence. Intelligent. There you go. You get to um like take over, mm -hmm. but like just like a toy for like kids. You know? Oh, a toy. Okay. Mm. Yeah, like a robot that you can control that has like Nerf guns and stuff on it. Oh, mm. okay, okay. So you're looking for like some type of robotic like like Pokemon or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just said the, the other day to somebody, it was actually a class I was in. It was for a homework assignment. And I was just like, I really wish we had Pokemon. <laughs> that wouldn't be that wouldn't be bad, though. I no. just feel like, yeah, that would be awesome. You have someone to assist you. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ash's mom, what did she have? He That thing helped her around the house, you mm -hmm. know? Like the, the Squirtles and the Pikachu. Yeah, like yeah. That. I just, you know. So, but you saying in robot form. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. What would you name your robot? <laughs> Ooh, that is a good question. Hmm. This is serious, y'all. This <laughs> is... While you think of a name, I'm going to share a technological thing that I hope happens. I oh, you it. got it? What is it? Blue tiger. Blue tiger? I that's like that. four syllables. <laughs> okay, that's three syllables. Why blue tiger? Is it going to be a tiger? Because my favorite color is blue, and mm -hmm. like one of my favorite animals is a tiger. Mm, okay. I kind of see that with the hat, the shoes, Matt. Yeah, that's kinda, that's kinda fire. you did it up today. <laughs> you did it up. Okay, I don't okay. know why I just flipped your... Because I can't. <laughs> and then I missed. <laughs> I look forward to something filling in an Excel sheet for me. I just wanted mm. to do it all on its own. I want to just talk to the computer and fill in the Excel sheet. I can't stand Excel, so it would just be nice. It's the simple things I want. Yeah. It's that, the simple things. That is nice. <laughs> I can see that. So I was thinking like some like a robot, like mm -hmm. but like I seen have, have y'all seen like so the movie two robot? It's like I want like a, a intellectual kind of like robot, like mm -hmm. for like papers and like the simple things. Oh but like, yeah! But mm -hmm. I'm scared because like robot, like the art, the yeah. 
the AI and it will take over. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you going to stop your robot from taking over? I guess you said it's not going to take over. So let's just believe it's not going to take over. Mm -hmm. I mean, what would it do? It just nerf guns, though. Mm -hmm. Them little things is creative. Have you seen <laughs> Small Soldiers? Have you seen that movie? Mm. Mom, make sure you <laughs> show Small Soldiers. Them little toys did the damage. Oh, you, oh, you just don't remember? Look at her. He's like, I'm, well, that's your homework when we leave here. Mm. And you don't even have to report and let me know if you did the assignment. <laughs> that was an old movie. Well, um, I am happy to hear about some of the inventions that you hope to come, both of y'all. I, too, hope for mechanical Pokemon and Digimon and just something to just really just clean my house. Like, that would be nice. Again, yeah. just simple things. That would be beautiful. <laughs> that would be beautiful. <laughs> Aaron, you do the chores right now? <laughs> That's a no. Yeah. So you don't need a robot. You good. Mom needs one. <laughs> Man, she in the face. I of, sometimes nope. help. You sometimes help. Well, thank you for being open, honest, and transparent with us. <laughs> All right, y'all, we are going to bask in our inventions that we are going to create. I just hope somebody else creates them. <laughs> um, this is the top of our, or this is this is imagination at its best, right? Imagining a better world. And for our next segment coming up, we're going to see how we can apply that to some real world um, areas or concepts such as community and reimagining what community could look like for you. And that is one of Dove's values and initiatives is reimagining and co-creating with community. So do not go anywhere. We'll be right back to continue this conversation. Um, so yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Thank you. The Plug Network is ever expanding. Subscribe to our YouTube page and hit the notification bell for all updates. Thank you and stay plugged in. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. Welcome back to my check. I see the hole. <laughs> I see it. I see it. <laughs> Production oh. has pointed out that some of the green on Aaron's shirt has created a hole. So all you see the logo through. <laughs> oh man. Well, this is better than our previous talk. He was thinking about coming in a green shirt and just having a floating head. Mm. Yeah. So, that seems fun. Yeah. Another time, I guess. Well, I mean, you've accomplished something, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna drop this book and then I'm gonna pull up this phone and we are going to continue our conversation about imagination. So starting with Nigel. Cool. What are some things that you can imagine <laughs> when it comes to your community? And some of the things I noted down was think about how safety looks for you and where you wanted to improve. Think about authoritative figures in our communities um, and our law. <laughs> Think about friends and family and education and anything outside of that. What does that look like for you? Mm. That is a Jeez, question. I think that was a loaded <laughs> question again. <laughs> it's like, oh, let's like... start. Let's start. Let's start with one. We're gonna. We'll just go down a little mm. bit. So, when it comes to reimagining community, mm. 
First of all, what is, which we're going to actually touch on this in our next episode, what the <laughs> conversation of community, but mm -hmm. think about the safety around your community right now, where and in what ways could you, could that improve? Imagine mm. a better system of security in your current community or neighborhood. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I would say what that looks like for my community is, I want to say less police presence. Mm -hmm. um, typically, you know, community being like communal, like with each other, being um, on the same page and unity with each other um, to where that presence is not needed from police. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just us, you know, governing ourselves and looking out for each other. Um, so yeah, I'll keep it at that. <laughs> okay, okay. I like that. Um, and we actually, Dub actually did a an activity with some kids last year. I believe it was last year um, where they imagined um, a utopia for themselves as well regarding mm -hmm. community. And some of them uh, definitely had the same feelings and expressions with that. Mm -hmm. So... I hope we look into bringing something like that back because it was a pretty cool experience. And then the way we did it, we did it, we themed it through like the arts. Mm -hmm. So like music, um, writing, painting, things like that. Right. So um, very cool experience and definitely a dope way to express and show, you know, what's in your head. Like, here's mm -hmm. how I imagine these things. So yeah, um, great answers. That definitely also aligns with Dove as we are looking to, like I said, co-creating with community, looking to reimagine what some of these things could look like for community. Mm -hmm. And we wanna put it in the hands of the community. What would you like to see? Think outside of the box. You can actually do that. We're in a system that tells you otherwise, or they give you the box to think in, but mm -hmm. think outside of that. I think that is definitely a good first step when trying to tackle what it is that you want, because you gotta visualize it first. Mm -hmm. That's and that's true. the thing. I never knew what to visualize because I didn't think you could visualize it. So, Aaron, what about you? Tell me how you would reimagine friends and family. Hmm. How would that circle show up for you? What would that circle contain? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you imagine them all being entrepreneurs like you and everyone's just buying from each other? Do you imagine no arguments? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> arguments. <laughs> Easy, yeah. We all can do just fine without any arguments. <laughs> so we don't want no arguments in Aaron's utopia. Mm -hmm. What else can you imagine? No deaths. No deaths. Mm. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah. Immortality. Immortality. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to knock you, but I just feel like you would be so bored. I feel like you're going to get to age 115 and be like, what do I do now? <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> it's real. Explore. You're going to explore, mm. but you probably already explored. Where, where, where would you explore? And what would be your favorite place to explore? Space. Mm. Space. Oh, you might need an additional 115 years. <laughs> <laughs> Immortality is just what you need. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like if I would have like if I would have had an immortality, I feel like it would have been like one of those things where I would like go up to space and explore it for like let's say like 300 and something years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll come back to Earth and it'll just be like the planet of the apes, like. <laughs> the apes are taking over. We regressed. Is that what you said? <laughs> like some dystopia. You, okay, stuff. so is it new apes taking over, or are we reversing back to apes? Like, if people believe in that, mm. <laughs> like, um, like the apes that are still on the planet and stuff. Mm -hmm. Since like all the humans like die out or something, like they'll like. Oh, Take you're the only one with immortality. Yeah. Okay. Like my family. Oh, your family. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. You gotta look out. You what? What, what about me? 
I know we just met, but like. Yeah, that's what Aaron was like saying. I just met you. Hey. That's crazy. We're going to be, we're going to die out and be replaced with apes. Man, right. You in here? You, this is the whole game plan. <laughs> okay. Well, what about, so you've had unique experiences, Aaron, as a kid uh, being a part of Breeway. When you think about your encounters and interactions with, say, the police, um, how could you, I don't know, how would you reimagine those kind of interactions or just the police presence? The whole how role would I, of police. Like, reimagine it? Mm hmm. Um, really, like, them, like, actually, like, trying to do their job and, like, not, like, trying to, like, mess with people mm -hmm. for the color and the race that they are mm -hmm. and like really no more racism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. i think that's good that's great that's a great answer um i definitely uh would love to agree with you i agree with you 100 percent. do your job and leave black people alone. Does that wrap it up in a nutshell there? Well, it's really not just black people though, like. No, it's not. Mm. Who else is being harassed by the police? A lot of different like races mm. that are not like, isn't it Caucasian for white? Mm -hmm. Caucasian. Yeah, that are not con uh, Caucasian. Caucasian. <laughs> Good job. Um, Or like, like they're not treated the same way, mm -hmm. and like I think they should be like I think everybody should be treated the same way. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. You're so smart. For real. This is why you <laughs> STEM programs and stuff making Ooh. golf courses. Golf courses. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I horrible. like that. <laughs> well, Aaron, thank you so much, and thank you for being. Boots to ground. I don't know. I was about to say toes to ground, but I'm sure you had some shoes on. Uh, boots to ground uh, with anything community. Aaron has been involved past the uprisings, past protesting, and has been at many community events, either by Breeway or somebody, you know, surrounding Breeway or something like that. Um and you know he's still here he's still here he's still thriving mm -hmm. doing good in school making lip glosses and keychains now for his <laughs> business and bath essentials mm -hmm. so i'm proud of you aaron and you deserve all the pats on the back mm -hmm. that's real for you there you go <laughs> you deserve all them pats on the back and i appreciate your input when it comes to imagining a world with policing like different policing and stuff so thank you for sharing that. All right. I feel like we had a great conversation around the concept of imagination. Um, thank you so much, Nigel and Aaron. I think that y'all's answers to my question was great. Y'all were very articulate in explaining um, your points of view behind it. And Aaron, if you ever are bored after you're done with immortality, <laughs> I don't even know if the plug gonna be around <laughs> around that time, but please come back anytime, okay? Hey. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and begin wrapping up our show. I just want to remind you all of uh, the announcement that I made earlier about shirts with a purpose. And remember, Aaron cannot make it himself because he is 12. <laughs> so we have any volunteers <laughs> that want to make Aaron a shirt, Please haul at him okay. <laughs> when he gives his social media. But again, shirts with a purpose over at the Newburgh Community Center. Again, for ages 14 through 18, these kids will learn how to design, create, and press their own shirts. And this will be starting, it's already started in April, but will be going up through to the end of May. That'll be 2.30 to 4 o'clock at the Newburgh Community Center. Um, first four weeks of this program, the focus group is going to be on, I said focus group, but uh, they're going to um, be inviting girls and women. And then the last four weeks, boys and men. And then the program ends with a group trip to the African Roots Museum. Did you? Art. I'm just playing. Just playing. <laughs> just playing. Like, I knew it was a chair. <laughs> 
Aaron, go ahead and plug yourself for the people. Where can people find you so they can get your shirt made? You know what I'm saying? Social media. Oh, we just won this whole spiel. He swore he <laughs> has some, but it's just offline right now. Dang, what if I want to purchase? I know. Get some. We need your phone. Right. My mom has that. Your your mom knows your information. <laughs> Lord, you can DM us if you want to get a hold of Aaron and his business. But <laughs> thank you, Aaron, for coming. You can find him at the square mm. on such and such days after school. How's that? Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nigel, go ahead and plug yourself for the people. Uh, so you can find me uh, on social media at KHXNZV Sage. Um, yeah. That's my, that's my little handle. That's the little handle, <laughs> okay. Little, little handle. And you can email me <laughs> at amira.bryant at spalding.edu. Um, soon we're going to have our emails up for Dove. So that'll be amira at Dove Delegates. And you can follow Dove Delegates on all platforms, like I said, just Dove Delegates on both Twitter, on all three, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. So be sure to follow. If you are interested in joining or creating a series or you know somebody that is, please also reach out to us as well. You can DM us or shoot the email, like I said, uh, and we can get you started and get together with that. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said... Great episode on imagination. We are going to go ahead and dip out of here. Um, and we'll see you for the next episode. Yes. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Come back. The Plug Network is ever expanding. Subscribe to our YouTube page and hit the notification bell for all updates. Thank you and stay plugged in. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK.